Yeah, it's utter chaos, Wayne. I remember the farce that happened in Queensland where the Gold Coast Suns were playing the Southport Sharks. They'd only kicked a few goals in the first quarter and they called off the match uh, because the lockdown was it, and they all ran off the field and went home. Well, you had a game, I think, in the one of the leagues, the Hume Football League perhaps, where they had to pull the game short and actually not complete the match. Well, yes, and of course, maybe the Murray Magpies would have been thankful for that because I, I think <laughs> Holbrook might have been about 30 goals to nothing at that stage in a senior game. Uh, it might have been at the mercy rule as uh, we talk about around here being applied in senior football. Well, here on the Flow Morning Show, it's an opportunity for us to take a look at uh, what happens with a lockdown and some of the issues a lockdown causes. And we've seen uh, over the past couple of lockdowns, one in New South Wales and one in Victoria, that uh, it causes uh, consternation in a great way on regional communities. I've got Ricky Lambert here for the Flow News 24 desk uh, joining me to discuss it. Hi, Ricky. How are you? Great. Thanks, Wayne. Well, these lockdowns that are called at uh, 12.30, 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon by Gladys Berejiklian, and she then calls on the, the people in regional areas to get home by 5 o'clock. Everyone uh, in regional areas knows that we're out playing sport. Uh, We've got Mm. rugby and we've got football going and uh, lots of games happening. Yet uh, suddenly uh, officials are scrambling to tell players um, that they're going to have to shorten quarters and we're going to have to get them home. Yeah, it's utter chaos, Wayne. I remember the farce that happened in Queensland where the Gold Coast Suns were playing the Southport Sharks. They'd only kicked a few goals in the first quarter and they called off the match uh, because the lockdown was it and they all ran off the field and went home. Well, you had a game, I think, in the one of the leagues, the Hume Football League perhaps, where they had to pull the game short and actually not complete the match. Well, yes, and of course, maybe the Murray Magpies would have been thankful for that because I, I think Holbrook <laughs> might have been about 30 goals to nothing at that stage in a senior game. Uh, it might have been the mercy rule, as uh, we talk about around here, being applied in senior football. Yeah, that's a uh, good result for them. The forfeit's probably worth better uh, results on the ladder than the actual way the game was going. But And then there was a game, I think, in uh, AFL Riverina or Farrow, where it was not meant to happen on Sunday. It just didn't go ahead. It certainly didn't. Uh, Ganmain or GGGM Lions taking on Coolerman. But the game that uh, was one of the biggest concerns was where Kylie Amberley were taking on uh, the people from uh, Ardlethan and also Aria Park, the Northern Jets in Farrah football. And uh, what was interesting about this is, is that if you take a look at uh, the distance between Kylie Amberley and Ardlethan, well, the visiting side had uh, one hour and 40 minutes of travel to get home. Uh, so uh, how do you get home by five? And uh, we look at uh, what, say, the New South Wales police um, were talking about in relation to this and how many officers were going to be put on the road to make sure that people weren't breaching the orders and a $5,000 fine to kick it in. Uh, and you ask the question of how panic would set in and people would feel like they've, they've got to get out of here, we've got to go quickly. And that causes, I think, more of an issue than maybe the orders that were given to start with. Well, yeah, we've got to remember that uh, the whole premise for what the lockdowns and other restrictions is about is about saving lives. But road safety is also about saving lives as well. And as you mentioned, that game uh, the, where they had to leave very quickly uh, when the game concluded would have only concluded about ten past four, half past four maybe. Uh, it's a very tight run to get home within uh, five. You can't get home by five o'clock. Uh, now, this is the trouble with messaging from premiers and governments and police commissioners is they don't seem to want to undermine their messaging by saying, if you're out there in the regions, just make sure you've made a reasonable effort to get going. And as they've said in a comment today in the media, uh, we're not mucking around. You're not going to be allowed to offer up excuses, the police commissioner says. Well, surely a reasonable excuse is my football match only finished half an hour ago. Well, it might have been. Uh, you should have just got off at three quarter time. I mean, uh, let's just apply the injury rule. Uh, you know, that uh, we're all injured. We're all going home. No showers for any of those fellows. But in, in Victoria, we had the same situation situation on a Thursday where around four hours was given and that they immediately locked down on that Thursday afternoon. Folk were then uh, in a quandary, particularly those that needed to get across the border so that they wouldn't be uh, in a, you know, say, a 14 day quarantine situation for their work. I mean, these have put enormous pressure on those people. Well, I think the trouble is that police will be reasonable with these things usually. Uh, and the messaging uh, at a local level, if a police officer pulled someone over and said, why are you still out? after five o'clock. I'm sure they would be quite reasonable, but the messaging needs to be clearer to regions.
Aboriginal communities because otherwise they're under incredible stress, uh, not knowing how the law will be enforced when they're pulled up on the roads. And of course, this takes us to another point of the handling of this. And is this the right handling? And Tony Abbott, the former Prime Minister, he's calling for a Royal Commission into the handling of the pandemic. And uh, when you look at it, maybe statewide Royal Commissions, and there you have Rex Patrick, Senator for South Australia, who has won a case so that this National Cabinet, an unelected group, have to actually come clean on what is actually happening in the National Cabinet so that we can see, is a Royal Commission going to be required so that we can find out why governments have made some of the mistakes they've made? Well, when you consider uh, that previously at National Cabinet, the comment has been made by Premiers and others that there were robust discussions at National Cabinet, it would be interesting to be a fly on the wall and I think the public's entitled to know who pushed for what. Did Daniel Andrews push hard for his lockdown in region in Sydney uh, when he was trying to say that Sydney should lock down like Melbourne was? Uh, there shouldn't be all this secrecy around it. And I called for this on the morning show a while back, that there should be uh, royal commissions, like Mr Abbott is saying, federally, but in every state and territory. The public should be shown exactly where the premiers acted on health advice or on some political imperatives. Well, we're going to follow this uh, with a very interesting outcome, I would suspect, in New South Wales. Uh, regions uh, on a Saturday, not able to get to a shop. Uh, remember that a lot of country shops aren't open all the time either, and uh, they're not open with extended hours. That would have caused uh, a lot of people a lot of heartache, I'm sure, uh, from uh, the weekend's announcement. We'll cover that further here on Flow FM.